the San Siro Stadium in Milan. A crowd of around 40,000 for this semi-final first leg. And although they don't get many supporters in the Principality, they've got a loyal band who've come here tonight hoping for Monaco to get a result that would give them a great chance of progressing through to the final. Inter Milan, though, will be stern opposition. And having beaten Ginkamp, Graz, Boavista and Anderlecht, they'll face this Monaco side who were very impressive in dispatching Newcastle United. They'll line up with the dangerous Sonny Anderson up front along with Thierry Henry and watch out also for Ikipa and Ben Ariba in the midfield. Inter Milan themselves have match winners of plenty. Ivan Zamorano, number nine, wasn't in the Chile side that recently played Brazil. And Maurizio Gantz, wearing 23, has scored six goals in the competition so far. They'll focus the striking partnership up front with just in behind them French international Yuri Djokov. Our referee from Belgium is Michel Pirot. And the two sides uh, change ends, a lively atmosphere, a noisy one as well with the Monaco supporters here in a crowd that looks about half full, but nevertheless in this vast arena is generating a decent atmosphere. Well, Milan still in a state of shock after the Juventus performance in this stadium in front of a capacity crowd on Sunday night when the Italian champions destroyed AC Milan by six goals to one. Confirmation of how this UEFA Cup has gone in the 90s. Bayern Munich, the defending champions, and they went out in the first round this year to Valencia. First touch for Zamorano. Two for Monaco is Blondo. This is Zanetti for Inter Milan. Ivan Zamorano calling for it in the centre. Three is Pistone. Now an early opportunity and Bartes has that covered. Very interesting to see how Monaco play it. Roy Hodgson there, second in, going to Blackburn next season. Henry. This is Monaco with uh, Equipa and Ben Arriba. And Blondo, and it comes off uh, Frezzi and Padluca. Tigana closest to us, who's masterminded this uh, UEFA Cup run this season, but still saw them beat. Uh, Krakow, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Hamburg and Newcastle and they were particularly impressive against the two German sides and against Newcastle. Bolondo. Ben Arriba. It's a strong run now, good spell for Monaco here. Henri, done it nicely. Still Henri. Oof. And that was a very dangerous cross that had Pistone running for cover. Lively opening for Monaco here. But look at. We'll claim that that was safe. Five minutes gone. Corner on the far side to Monaco. Obviously, Anderson will be one of the targets. just over J2 it's welcome it it's again and Zamorano, oh, and it was just wide. Goal kick. 
Maurizio Gantz was flying in at the far post. And Luca. Still into Milan. Nil. Monaco nil in the San Siro Stadium, semi-final of the UEFA Cup. Zanetti. Sforza was giving support, Zanetti. And now Bartes is in trouble, he's been fully exposed, but uh, Gantz was coming in, claiming the corner. It's going to be a goal kick. Well, Bartes was in all sorts of trouble there. And still Monaco looking to try and be industrious and creative. They know the advantage of an away goal here in the San Siro. Djokov lost out here. Henri, who's been so lively and still going and eventually losing out and inside to recover. And away come the Italians again. This is Zanetti. And here's Zamorano. And peeling away is Gantz. And that's the corner for sure. Blondeau making absolutely sure there was no risk taken there. Maurizio Gantz, six goals in the competition so far. And how lively he's looked in these opening exchanges. Not happy to let that one go out for a corner, but he won it anyway. Zamorano, the ex-Real Madrid man, the Chilean internationals, a danger. On oh, there's a chance there. And it was Gantz again as Henri who has had a very lively beginning, tries to break away for Monaco once again. Zanetti. Sforza. Here's Zamorano. And that's another corner. Well, real confusion here. But John Collins did his fair share of defensive duties there, just in case anything went wrong. So Zamorano is the key target man for these in-swinging corners for Inter Milan. It's goalless in the San Siro. Jokev went up, illegally free kick to Monaco. And the player down is Ben Arriba. Jokov, it's the fall, I think, that uh, did him irres. A touch from Grimandi, quarter of an hour gone. It's been a very enterprising start from Monaco, but Inter Milan have looked ominous as well. A touch from Henri. This is Paul Ince for Inter. A lot of speculation as to where he's going to be playing next season. He still could be playing with Inter Milan, but there are all sorts of rumours that he'll be coming back to Britain. Touch from Frezzi. Pistole. Anderson's been quite quiet so far, but he's setting away Henry. And Burgundy back to Padaluca. A little bit rushed from Inter Milan, that. And Jokov hasn't really taken control of the midfield like he's been able to do in some games. Claims for handball and given by French referee Piro. This is Gantz. Oh, he scored! An opportunist goal from Maurizio Gantz. 
who's very much been into Milan's man of this UEFA Cup. And that's goal number seven as he celebrates with Zamorano. Inter Milan lead after 17 minutes. And Gantz continued and took his chance very well. Well, again, needed a goal. And Irdez, who's very much a fringe player in this Monaco squad setup. Well, here was the incident that led to it. It was the handball. And it was a quickly taken free kick. Well, you could argue, and Grimandi might do, that that was a rolling ball when the free kick was taken. Irez was beaten, and Gantz buried it. 1-0 into Milan. What a start for them after a fascinating opening 17 minutes. This is Zanetti. Oh, Zamorano. Still Zamorano. And Zamorano over the bar. What a chance for the Chilean. And he knows it as well. He's experienced enough to have realised he should have buried that. Gantz went with him. But Zamorano wanted it all and hit it well wide in the end. So Inter Milan continue to press forward. And they lead here in the San Siro against Monaco, 1-0. Well, Inter Milan leading Monaco by a goal to nil in the San Siro in this semi-final first leg of the UEFA Cup. The game this evening, Tenerife against Schalke. Only He's only a teenager, but he's very, very fast. So Monaco have a free kick. An away goal would be so crucial. Zamorano back defending. And away come into Milan again. Djokov. That's nicely played, Gantz. Great chance here. He's got a second. Maurizio Grants after half an hour. And that's his eighth in the competition. And Inter Milan lead by two goals to nil now. And that is a super finish from a player who has thrived on the UEFA Cup football in this year's campaign. And congratulations from Jocker, but what a good finish, he just kept going. He had luck with the bounce, there was still plenty to do. Bartes gave him a huge opening, but he still had to take it, and take it with some aplong he did. Inter Milan lead after half an hour. And it's Gantz with the second of the match, and his personal second as well. Anderson, that's a free kick. Sonny Anderson has been rather quiet. And we haven't seen anything of Legvinsky. Been a big disappointment, despite the fact that he scored seven goals in this competition as well. He has hardly had a kick. And Collins. A free kick expert in this uh, Monaco side. And also for Scotland as well. And it's flown over. Takes a deflection though for a corner. Paul Ince one and Zamorano another who were far from happy with that decision. Here's the above angle. And well, you can't complain, it was a definite corner. J2 making his run. Henri his. And it was the decoy played in from Blondo. Real chance here, oh, and it's just wide. What an opportunity that was. And Grimandi 
knows it. Arguably the best chance of the match. He had plenty of time here when it fell to him. And it was not far away either. But this will be the true picture on the penalty spot. Oh, it's just wide. It doesn't have been on the target. Well, the keeper wouldn't have had a prayer. Collins. Henri. He's looking for the return, Henri. Anderson. And Anderson goes through. Padluka did ever so well there. Well, it was good play from Padluka because Anderson was racing in. That was goalkeeping at its best. Irelets. Should be Zanetti's. It's an acrobatic clearance. McMinsky. Away by Burgundy. Zamorano. They're beginning the buzz now. And a bit more space here. This is Gantz. Zamorano coming in. And Zamorano makes it 3 0. And Inter Milan have one step in the UEFA Cup final. Because we've only played 40 minutes. And already they're three in front. And what a story is developing here. Inter Milan leading Monaco 3 0. And Gantz on the break. Now there were so many options. But he could see Zamorano and a simple finish for the Chilean. Gantz is striking partner. And what a great first half for Inter Milan. They're three in front and almost have the tie wrapped up. Barely a quarter of the way through the 180 minute schedule of the two legs. This is Paul Ince. And Ince gets the return. Oh, and he was caught there. And he might react because he's gone to the wrong man. Blondo walks away. Now. There's going to be a yellow card. And he goes to Benariba. So Benariba gets booked. In store it was Blondo. But he did go for the wrong man, that was for sure. Benariba caught in. In still thinks it was uh, Blondo, but that was because it was blindside to him. In the game. Zamorano. Stats were showing there with Henri and Ince. <laughs> he wasn't having any of it. And it's getting a bit nasty at the end of the first half. Three nil to Inter Milan. Very late on Burgundy by Henri. J2. This is Collins. Little flick. Anderson goes through. Jocke. That's half time. Well, what a satisfactory performance for Inter Milan. Two goals from Maurizio Gantz after 17 and 30 minutes. Goals number seven and eight for him in this year's UEFA Cup. Followed by Julian Ivan Zamorano, five minutes from the break, adding a third. And the Monaco supporters are somewhat quiet at half-time because their side of trailing, it's into three, Monaco nil. 
Welcome back to the UEFA Cup and at the San Siro Stadium in Milan. Half time, 3 0 in favour of the hosts here as Monaco in the red. About to get us underway for this second half. They've got a mountain to climb. But if they can score, an away goal would give them a sporting chance in the second leg in Monaco in a couple of weeks' time. But rather cynical at the end of the first half. And one would hope that the second 45 minutes would be played in a better spirit than the final five minutes of the first half, uh, in which we saw one or two tackles that surely we don't want to infiltrate uh, UEFA Cup semi-final. Now. Well. It looks like a red card here. Yes, a red card for Grimandi. And the last thing the Monaco wanted, a sending off early in the second half. So 50 minutes played, and Monaco are still 3-0 down. And two in the centre, good catch, and it needed to be by Bartes. Luca says confirmation that uh, Shifo's on for Collins. Way coming to, and the flag goes up against uh, Zamorano. Came to Inter from Real Madrid. Spanish league leaders who on Monday night drew 0-0 with Compostela in their bid to win the Spanish championship. So Benariba to take the free kick for Monaco. They're 3-0 down. And this one floated in and only half cleared. This is Gantz now. Little spell for Monaco, but they've got to try and get a goal from it. Shifo. And Luka comes again, and he needs to be decisive. Ledzwinski. Big disappointment so far. Ince on the counter now for Inter Milan. Djokov, J2 to beat. Djokov to Ince. Zanetti. Touch from Pistoni, and he gets the return. And he's still going. Now what sort of cross can he provide? Here's a good chance for Inter Milan. And Zanetti shot straight at Bartes. And he knows what a good chance that was. So Bartes trying to get Monaco going. Shifo. Benariba. Blondo. Blondo again. Jokiev went in. Legvinsky adds a bit more like it. Good opportunity now, fine save. But Luka doing well to deny Sonny Anderson. Well, Anderson had got away here, and he normally buries those, and Pad Luka spread himself, and that saved the day. And Frazee, with a acrobatic clearance, completed the job. 
Londo. Ben Arriba. Ince goes in. And the free kick goes Monaco's way. A foul against Paul Ince. And he was tugging there, not once but twice. Simple for Luka. Ben Ariba trying out something a little bit alternative, a little bit more fired up, you feel, in this second half. Up to a keep back. And I'm sure he'd be a popular addition to this Monaco side who needs something now. Pretty badly, you feel. J2. Anderson, Shifo, two in the centre, ooh, there were two coming in. Well, it eluded the red and went out for a goal kick. Monaco, though, have picked up the tempo. And rather surprisingly, Inter have slackened off. Henri. That's a good run from Henri. He's done very well. And once again, across the face of the goal and away from danger. So, Victor Akipa is coming on to replace uh, Ben Ariba. Tigana, one of the great heroes of uh, French football from the 84 side that won the European Championship. 52 French caps, he won five titles and two cups. Formerly coached at Lyon. Now very much part of this uh, Monaco side and very popular amongst his fellow pros within the French game. Blondo. Oh, it's brilliant! And it's a keeper. What an introduction he's had. Fantastic finish. And that away goal could prove so significant. A bit of magic from a keeper. Well, there wasn't much on here. But he rifled that in. Well, I haven't seen him see him score too many ordinary goals. But he blasted that one in. And the away goal could prove so crucial. 71 minutes. And a kick back brings Monaco back in to the tie. Henri. And the flag saves the day. Well, Aaron Vinter replacing Schwarzer. Aaron Vinter, Dutch international. He's in the team that uh, lost to. Turkey last Wednesday in Brussels Spore. And the linesman was correct, that was offside, there wasn't too much doubting that one. The keeper again. He's so lively. Certainly made a difference. And those Monaco supporters realised that as well. Another goal, and they'd almost be favourites for the tie. It's certainly changed. Now they've got a chance. They've really played well away from home. There's roars for a penalty from the Monaco section. They're not going to get it. Anderson goes sprawling. Now, this will be a very interesting replay. What happened here? Well...
Zanetti. Shifo. Oh. Don't think that uh, Pistone played too much of the ball there against Henri. Yellow card. Petit. Showing his feelings as well. But it's a yellow card for Alessandro Pistone. And that was very late indeed. So Petit to curl a free kick in for Monaco. Now they've got a chance. Oh, it fell to the right man, Anderson. But Pat Lucas saved well. Henri was coming in. And it was a little flick on. And what a fine effort. Tigana knows they've got a chance here of stealing a second away goal and really saving themselves from what looked almost certainly elimination at half time. Oh, Zanetti going on the chase, Bartes, and just occasionally, he's clumsy, we're into stoppage time, and 3-1, they've still got a chance, Monaco, they've got a free kick here, and Bartes comes out, he wants to take it, everybody up, and I think more sensible is the reaction of some of his colleagues, this is only half time in the match and the last thing we want to do is concede another goal <laughs> not a free kick and surely this will be the last chance for Monaco <laughs> Petit once again to take it Zamorano's trying to cover everything. It's a clustered penalty area. And there's no way that's a penalty. The referee's had a close look with the linesman, Winter. I think he's going to blow the whistle. He has indeed. It's 3-1. A satisfactory result for Inter Milan. And Monaco will, I'm sure, think likewise after the half-time score of 3-0. An interesting second leg in a fortnight. Inter Milan 3 Monaco won the result from the San Siro.